morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to be completing a review over the periodic table. So let's go ahead and get started. The periodic table was first organized by Dmitry Mendeleev in the 1860s. There were only 60 known elements at the time. It was first organized by atomic mass and chemical properties, but now it's organized by atomic number. It is important to know that the atomic number is also the same as the number of protons. So if the atomic number or the number of protons were to change, it would also change the element. There were gaps in the table because other elements had not yet been discovered. This didn't bother Dmitry Mendeleev. He just took it as in that there were other elements that need to be discovered, and once they are discovered, they can fill in those gaps. Dmitry Mendeleev also came up with periodic law, which states that elements are organized by atomic number and similar chemical properties first. They are also organized by metals, metalloids, which are also known as semiconductors, and nonmetals. Metals tend to be solid at room temperatures, such as sodium. Nonmetals tend to be gases at room temperature. And metalloids are also called semiconductors. Why? Because they have properties of metals and nonmetals. A unique thing about metalloids is that they're able to conduct electricity without overheating. And we use this chemical property in all of our electronic devices. If you ever heard of silicon, silicon is used to make computer chips, which once again is able to conduct electricity without overheat. Each row on the periodic table is called a period. And from left to right, elements become less metallic as you go across the periods on the periodic table. Each column is called a group. And each group has the same number of valence electrons. And since they have the same number of valence electron, electrons, each group has similar chemical properties. So for example, each group will have the same number of will have the same oxidation number or charge. Here is a look at the current periodic table that we have now. Like I stated earlier, there are still gaps in a periodic table, but we're working hard to fill in those gaps as we discover more and more elements. Now we will be organizing our periodic tables by adding the number of valence electrons, oxidation numbers, and then color coding it by metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. You should have a periodic table on your desk and follow me as we go along. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add a number of valence electrons for each group. And remember we said each group has the same number of valence electrons, which is going to give it its chemical properties. So if you notice I put a 1 over hydrogen and put a circle around it, and, and then I put a 2 over beryllium and put a circle around it. I'm going to skip over our transition metals, then I'm going to put a 3 over boron, circle, 4 over carbon, circle, 5 over nitrogen, 6 over oxygen, 7 over fluorine, and then I'm going to put a 2 over helium. Why 2 over helium? Because two, helium only needs 2 valence electrons and it already has 2 valence electrons. And then from neon down to radon, I'm going to draw a line going from neon to radon, and then I'm going to draw another line coming out, and then I'm going to put an 8. What this signifies is that these elements have eight valence electrons, and these elements, all of them are stable, including helium, which that's why we call them noble gases. Now, we're going to go ahead and put a key in the middle. So I'm going to put circle equals valence electrons. So now when I see that circle, that lets me know that I'm talking about my valence electrons. So at this time, I give you about 10 more seconds to go ahead and complete yours, and then we'll move on to our oxidation number or our charge. All right, so now, we have our valence electrons up, so let's go ahead and erase our valence electrons off. And now, let's go ahead and look at our oxidation number or charge. So now this time, what you're going to do is, above where you put your valence electrons, you're going to put a, you're going to put your oxidation number, and then you're going to put a square around it. So above hydrogen, I'm going to put a plus one, I'm going to put a square around it. Above beryllium, above those valence electrons, I'm going to put a plus two with a square. Above boron, plus three with a square, and I apologize. 
And then above carbon, plus four, minus four. Have a square around it. Nitrogen, I'm going to put a negative three around it. Over oxygen, I'm going to put a negative two. Over fluorine, a negative one. And then over helium, a zero. So what this shows is that when these elements make a chemical bond, hydrogen that, or the elements in hydrogen's group are going to have a positive one charge because they're going to give away a, a one valence electrons. But really, it's going to have a positive two charge because it's going to give away two valence electrons. But if I come over here into the group with fluorine, fluorine is going to have a negative one charge because it's actually going to gain one valence electron. Oxygen is going to gain two valence electrons. That's why it has a negative two charge. Now, also, just like we did with our valence electrons, we're going to put a square this time, and a square equals our oxidation number. also known as our charge so next I'll go ahead and give you 10 seconds to go ahead and complete yours and then we'll move on to color coding our metals non-metals and metalloids great so at this time on your periodic table you should have your valence electrons with the circles around them and then have it noted or have your key on the side that shows that the circle equals valence electrons and you should also have your square around your oxidation number or your charges. Now let's color code our periodic table by metals, non-metals, and metalloids. If you notice, I have the metals are, that are in red and the metals are the most predominant elements on the periodic table. I have the non-metals in blue. And then we have our metalloids or our semiconductors in red. So I'm going to pause the video and give you time to go ahead and color code your periodic table by metals, non-metals, and metalloids starting now. Great. At this time, we should have our periodic table done by valence electrons, oxidation number or the charge, and also color coded by metals, non-metals, and metalloids. So let's go ahead and review a little bit. There's our valence electrons. There's our oxidation number. And now we have a periodic table quiz to take. So you're going to write each one of these questions down and then you're going to put your answer. So I go ahead and pause the video now while you write your questions down and put your answers. And you have 10 minutes to complete your periodic table quiz starting now. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for participating or going over this periodic table review with me. I hope it was helpful and I hope, hope that you got a lot of information out of it. I'm Travis Spivey signing off with my son, Jordan Spivey. Y'all have a wonderful, awesome day. Peace.